What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be walking you through the process of creating Blondy Sunflower Microgreens. Now this is something that we briefly discussed in our book, Becoming a Microgreen Master. Master. And today I just wanted to spend a little bit of time and walk you guys through how to do that because we did have one of our followers, So Dark, who left a comment on one of our videos talking about how they did a trial themselves and the results that they got were really awesome. It changes the flavor, the appearance, and the texture of the greens. So we thought it'd be fun to just kind of do this because we have actually been meaning to do this for over a year now. So let's go ahead and jump into the process. So what do we need? First, we need our trays. I have my three tray method, which consists of a bottom no hold tray that's going to be used to hold water later on. Then our top tray, which has little slots in it. You can also use a mesh tray if you'd like for this process, but this is one we use today. And then another no hold tray, preferably a black tray or a very dark one. That way we can keep all the light out that we can. So first I'm going to set this out of my way and we can now move into the next step. So now we need grow medium. For this, I'm gonna be using this Burpees Organic Potting Soil. I'm sure you guys have seen us use this a lot recently. And if you haven't, this is one of our favorite grow mediums right now. And it's because it has a very great consistency. There's a lot of cocoa core in here, a little bit of perlite. And overall, we just know that this grow medium works really great for us. So that's what we're gonna to use today. So now I need to measure out my grow medium. For this tray, we're gonna use eight cups of this grow medium here, and I'm gonna use my scooper. Two. So now I'm just gonna go through, break up any clumps, if there are any, if there's any big twigs, get those out of there, and just kind of move this across my tray to create an even surface. Now we need our seeds. So for today, I'm gonna actually, I can't pick it up because it's very heavy, but I have a 25 pound bag of black oil sunflower seeds from Johnny Seeds right down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my scale, make sure zero is out. And we're gonna get 125 grams. There, that's close enough. We'll do 126. <laughs> okay, now you may be asking yourself, why am I pouring this into a strainer? That's because today we need to rinse off the seeds. Sunflower seeds tend to be very dirty and you want to clean that off, especially for doing blackout, which is what we have to do a lot of for the blondie sunflowers. That way we can prevent as much germs as we possibly can. I'm gonna set that down here real quick. And now let's take this back over to our station. So you may be asking yourself, hold on, this is completely different from the last time I saw you guys do a how to grow with sunflower. That's because we changed our process. Um, we realized that we can actually take these seeds and sow them directly onto the medium and it does perfectly fine. So that's what we now do instead of doing all that pH balancing and craziness. And the reason why we used to do that crazy process was because it was a different batch of seed. And for that particular batch, it took a crazy process. It didn't like just going directly onto the medium. We had a lot of problems with seed holes and the growth just wasn't really happening. Um, that's something that happens from time to time. So just keep in mind that with sunflower, you may have to change your process depending on your batch. So now we are almost through seeding this tray. I'm just trying to get them as even as I can. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult when they are moist. I think we're actually doing really good here. So whenever they're moist, the seeds really like to grab onto each other in your hand. So you have to kind of like shake them and just fling them basically all over your tray <laughs> the best that you can. Um, and don't worry if there's little clumps, they're quite easy to move because they're a bigger seed. So we're going to do that real quick. Like these little groups right here, I just want to knock them just over a little bit. That way they're not stacked on each other. All right. So now I need to mix up a prophylactic spray or a hydrogen peroxide spray because <clears throat> I am noticing that my bottle over here is a little empty and I need a little bit more than this. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that and I will meet you guys back over here. So I mix this at a 1 to 16 ratio for 3% food grade hydrogen peroxide. So now let's go ahead and take the spray and spray our seeds. 
and get this medium nice and moist. Try to give it a little test spray. So first I'm gonna start a little bit far away. Just give it enough to get that medium from going everywhere. So we really wanna use a hydrogen peroxide spray or something of that matter for this because blondies are basically just really blacked out microgreens. They do not see the light whatsoever during the entire duration of their grow. Um, and we really wanna prevent any problems with mold or disease because it's really easy in dark, moist environments for that to happen. So by doing this, we are just taking extra steps to make sure that does not happen. <laughs> I don't wanna lose this batch. <laughs> there's a lot of people that actually do like to sanitize their seeds. And there's plenty of ways that you can do this. You can mix vinegar or bleach. Um, what I would do though, is just make sure you look that up because uh, it's different everywhere as far as how much you can use. So I believe that this is perfect. It's enough moisture in there. It does not need any more. So what I need to do now is grab that last no hole dark tray and we're going to place that on top of this and i am going to grab a 15 pound paver or actually i'm gonna do two little bricks it's easier and we're just gonna get that weighted so what i need to do is i need to place this onto a dark shelf so that way they can begin germinating which i have one right down here and we're just going to leave that alone for now and i'm going to come out come back out later today I'm gonna give them another good mist if they need it. And I'm just gonna continue that process over the next few days. And I'll give you guys some updates until we move to the next step. See you then. Today is day three of our sunflowers and I'm gonna pull it off the shelf here. We'll take a look at it because right now we are on day two of them actually germinating. It's been two cold days. So let's kind of knock that off, make sure it's nothing sticking. All right, so we are seeing these beginning to germinate. That radical is pushing out of the seed hole and then curving down into our grow medium, which is exactly what I want to see today. I am noticing, though, two spots with some decay that's starting to mold up. So I'm going to grab those out because we do not want that in there since these are going to be in blackout for the entire duration of the grow. Um, that would cause some problems. So I got that one. Let me grab this other one. And I can tell it's mold because, oh, I didn't want to pull that one. But you can tell it's mold because it is spider webbing off of the seed hole rather than the root itself. So that makes a big difference on which one that is. There's another little one right here. I'm gonna grab that one too. I wish I had her little tweezers. It's a lot easier, <laughs> but that works. Okay, perfect. So I think I got all my problematic ones out of there and I'm happy with how everything else is looking. So now I need to give them a nice misting with our prophylactic spray. So that way we can continue to be safe with not having mold. I'm gonna focus a little bit more in this corner too because it was drying out a little bit. Fun thing is you can actually see this starting to bubble up a little bit from the hydrogen peroxide. So it means that it is doing its job in helping treating these. All right. And I think that is a perfect amount of water. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tray back on top, get my bricks put back on top of here as well, place this back onto my dark shelf. And then probably in two more days, I will see you guys that we should be taking these out of the weighted period and moving into the next step. So I'll see you guys then. Today is day six of our grow. So I'm going to pull this off the shelf and we're going to take a look at it on the table. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is remove these bricks because it doesn't look like we're gonna need those anymore. You can tell because right now, these microgreens are coming out of the sides, at least over on this side over here. And we have gotten rid of basically all the black on top. That's what I wanted to see at this point. We're seeing a lot more of this yellowing, which is perfect. That means we need to have removed that seed hole and we can move on to our next step. So before we move on to our next step, I'm just gonna give these a light little watering so that way they don't dry out because I don't want that. And we're gonna use that prophylactic spray again, which is the hydrogen peroxide mixed with some water. And I'm actually gonna start at the roots. If you guys wanna take a peek at them. <laughs> um, it looks like they are looking very healthy. There's a tiny bit of browning, which tells me these did get a little bit dried out on one day. That or it is the soil color just latching on to those roots. And that is perfectly fine. Just needs a little bit of water and that should be good. I'm gonna take a look at my grow medium. It is looking pretty moist still. So I don't think I'm gonna miss the top of this right now. I'm gonna save that for later. And now I can talk about the next step. 
So whenever it comes to Blondie microgreens, like we said before, these are something that you do not introduce to light whatsoever throughout their entire grow. You want them to stay yellow. And in order to stay yellow, you have to block the light. To do that, I'm actually gonna use that tray that was like this. I'm gonna wipe off these teen holes on the back of it. And we're gonna flip it over just like this into a dome like we usually do with blackout. This way it restricts all the light from them. And you may notice that, these, that this tray is a shorter tray. Generally, if you have one that is taller, that would be really much better to use because these are gonna start to stretch up a lot more like, like one of these, which are the two inch trays. And it just gives you a little bit more space for them to stretch up and not push this tray off of them, which does cause a little bit of light to get through over here. So we might see a tiny bit of greening, but for the most part, this should stay mostly yellow. Another option that you could do is homemade blackout dome, or I think Bootstrap Farmer actually does have a blackout dome that you can buy on their website. And this is just a humidity dome that we took, um, was it Plasti Dip? And we just coated the outside of this. If you're curious about how to do that, we have a video that we made, I think like a year ago, um, that really shows you the process of how to do this without messing it up. Because believe it or not, it's simple, but there are ways of making mistakes. So with that being said, that is it for today. I'm gonna stick this onto my shelf in a dark area, no light whatsoever. So I'm gonna put this at the bottom because I know that we are probably gonna end up using these shelves later on. And that way we don't get any light on these guys. And from this point forward, we're just gonna pay attention to this. I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna water it twice a day with the pro prophylactic spray. And we'll just give it a nice misting on the bottom. We'll check the top if it does need it, I'll water it there too. And it's really gonna be a quick process because once these go into blackout, they grow rather quickly and we don't want them to fall over. So we're gonna keep an eye on that and I'll see you guys maybe tomorrow. So today is day eight of our Sunflower Blondie Grow. And these have been in blackout for three full days. Now, something you might be noticing is that our tray here is actually been pushed up by the sunflowers. And what that tells me is underneath this, they have been getting a little bit of light so we're probably gonna see this edge around here looking a lot greener and the center is probably gonna be yellow like what we want. So let's look at it. <laughs> so what happens whenever plants start to absorb light, they start to green up from that process and that's what we are seeing here. The ones in the middle clearly did not receive any light whatsoever. They are quite yellow, which means they are now a blondie. But the ones on the edges are kind of yellow, kind of green. They got a little bit of an ombre thing going on here. So that's not entirely a blondie, and that's something to be expected from this shorter tree here. It doesn't have enough uh, depth to it to really hold these guys all into blackout. I'm gonna do another experiment that's gonna show you guys three different ways using that uh, blackout dome, the two inch tray, and this one inch tray here to put these into blackout so you can see the effects of what actually happens depending on what you're using on top. Now let's just take a look at this. What I am noticing is that these guys are rather tall and that's something that happens whenever you put a plant into blackout. They stretch trying to find that light. So when you're doing blondies, you're gonna end up with a taller product. But our middle is a little bit dimpled down here and I think that was just a germination issue. So whenever I harvest this, I will just be kind of careful whenever I get to that middle section here so that way I don't cut my hands or anything. And we're just gonna go ahead and jump into harvesting this right now. And then we'll do a wait, we'll talk about the weight, and then we'll also do a taste test. And I want to pull one of the green ones aside and one of the yellow ones. So let's go ahead and turn this on. Boop. These are looking really pretty. Personally, I kinda think it's cool looking with the ombre going on here. It makes it for a fun look. And I'm curious to see uh, what the flavor is going to be like, because usually I've only had them whenever they're really green or whenever they're really yellow. I've never had one that's in the in-between state. So it looks like we got a harvest weight of 426 grams, which is a super healthy harvest weight, especially for sunflower. And I did have one little spot here that I actually didn't want to harvest because I noticed that due to some seed holes that got stuck in there during the process of germinating. They started to decay and that caused some mold and I just, I don't wanna mix that into my batch over here because everything else looked so good. So we're just gonna avoid that and I'm gonna move this out of my way. Now we can move into a taste test. First, I'm going to find my 
lucky winners here because I want a really yellow one, but I also want one of those kind of greenish ones. So let me just find them. I think all the yellow ones got in the middle. So we have our two different groups here from that same tray. And I think I'm going to start probably with, let's start with the green ones. So we're going to start with these green ones first and just kind of see what they taste like whenever they're not fully developed into the green. It tasted really good. Um, lots of crunch. I'm not really getting too much of that kind of astringent flavor, which is really nice. That's what you expect whenever you do blondies. Um, light sweetness. It was very mild. I like that a lot. Um, definitely different from whenever you are eating the fully green ones. Now we can try the blondies. There was a lot of sweetness in that. Um, wow, that was kind of shocking. Whenever I taste tested the Blondie microgreens, they were very sweet. It was almost the moment that I bit down into it. You get this burst of sweetness followed by that nutty flavor and the texture of it was a little bit softer, but it was still crunch. Overall, the whole experience of the flavor I really enjoyed. And personally, I think I kind of liked the Blondie ones more than whenever you grow them underneath lights. It was just a little bit more enjoyable for my taste preference. The colors are gonna be beautiful to throw into a salad to get that pop of yellow. All right guys, so that is it. We wanted to try to grow Blondie microgreens and we did that here with our sunflowers. It did turn out to be a little bit of a mixed bag and that's mostly because that tray got raised up and the light got in there. But that is why we're going to be doing another experiment where we are going to be using those three different methods, which we should be getting a lot more solid results, especially for the ones that cover up more of that stem and no light gets in there. But I am very excited with how it's turned out. I love the flavor on this. I love the colors. And even with the mixed in little bits of green, I thought that they were beautiful and it made it a fun little product, a lot more different than what you would normally grow with sunflowers. If you guys are interested to learn more fun tricks like this, we have an ebook now, which is our Becoming a Microgreen Master. And there's a whole section in this book that is just loaded with so many different tips and tricks that we have learned over the years that I think that you guys would really enjoy including things like this with our blond blondie microgreens, blondie. <laughs> so if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. We'd love to get those answered for you guys. And we have a Facebook and an Instagram that are both at On The Grow Farms and a website that has tons of blogs. And you can easily find this book on there along with the link to Kindle. And that is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you guys so much. Keep on believing.